one of the uh, things that is funny about this clip, which was uh, Rachel Maddow talking to Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC, kind of just skylarking or, you know, floating a trial balloon of a way where, hey, maybe we can get around this. With Spiro Agnew, you get a 40 count, 40 count federal indictment that is brought against him, mm -hmm. not related to Watergate, but because of crimes that he was committing in his own office in the White House. Um, and in that case, what the Justice Department um, bravely and, and nimbly and controversially brokered with him is that that indictment would essentially go poof in exchange for him agreeing to get out of the White House. Mm -hmm. And so that that delicate balance between needing a political solution to the criminal mm -hmm. in the White House and needing a criminal solution, a criminal law solution to the criminal in the White House is one that 50 years ago this year in 1973, we dealt with, uh, in, in 1972, we dealt with with Spiro Agnew. You have to wonder if the Justice Department is considering whether there is some political solution to this criminal problem, whether part of the issue here is not just that Trump has committed crimes, but that Trump has committed crimes and plans on being back in the White House. Do they consider as part of a potential plea offer something that would prescribe him, proscribe him from 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 running for office again? I don't know. I, I would imagine if anything like that happened, that it would have to come from the defense side of the negotiation that the mm. that the trump team would would say oh by the way and with this we will also you know drop out of the uh, the race for president uh, otherwise it would put the justice department in this position that donald trump claims they're in you know, he claims they're trying to stop him simply trying to stop him from becoming president again and that's the only reason uh, they're doing this we're entering a banana republic phase where, you know, each successive president can threaten, you know, their their predecessor with, you know, being put in jail or having all kinds of conditions put on their continued citizenship and whatnot. Um, you have now, you know, people on MSNBC, particularly people like Rachel Maddow, were saying, you know, the problem with Trump is that he is the destroyer of norms. He is going, you know, he he you know, has his steak cooked well and he eats it with ketchup. He's like a horrible human being. He's an oaf, an ogre, a bull in a china shop, et cetera. But there you have people like that actually floating an idea where if you read about this in Chile after Pinochet, you would be like, what the fuck is going on here? This is the, you know, the quintessence of like a banana republic. And it's being talked about seriously on, you know, major media. Yeah, I, I the problem as I see it is that uh, to go back to something we discussed before, <clears throat> excuse me, we um, we just we haven't had a conversation. We haven't had an explicit conversation about the nature of the free pass that that high ranking politicians are going to get. They're yeah. definitely going to get some kind of a free pass. We haven't really had a candid discussion about, you know, sort of what it looks like. We just know that they get one. And so that leaves a room for somebody like Trump to say, well, wait a minute, you know, Hillary Clinton is, you know, a corrupt criminal flaunter of norms um, who put, you know, national security at significant risk by, you know, setting up this Betty Crocker server in her house. Like, what, what, why am I getting prosecuted? That's not a completely unreasonable position to take. Now, part of what I think would come up if we had this very, you know, sort of unseemly discussion about, you know, why high ranking politicians get a free pass that the rest of us don't and what the shape of that pass is, um, is, for example, Hillary, I don't think Hillary Clinton is any less corrupt than Donald Trump is. She might even be more corrupt, but I think she's less dangerous. I think she's less irresponsible. I think she sort of understands institutional norms and, and the importance of things like, um, you know, uh, uh, cozying up, not cozying up to, to dictators like uh, Kim Jong-un. So, so in some sense, you could make a case that she should get a bigger and more durable free pass than Donald Trump. Um, and, and you wouldn't be crazy, but like, can you imagine? I can't imagine ever having that discussion explicitly. And so this heuristic, you know, this this um, uh, formula is just out there somewhere in the ether. We've never really tried to work it through or, 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 or concretize it. And yet it's there. And the the sort of seeming inexplicability of why Hillary Clinton gets a free pass, but Donald Trump doesn't get a free pass is going to be a source of conflict and grievance because we can't have an, a, an honest discussion about who gets free passes and why. Are there any you know, structural or institutional reforms that would help with this problem? I mean, we had your 
call your Cato colleague Ian Vasquez on here a while ago talking about the decline in human freedom around the world, uh, particularly post pandemic. And a lot of that has to do with institutional decline and rise in corruption, uh, specifically here in the United States. Is there anything there that could help stop this slide towards the banana republic, if that's how we're putting it? Um, or is this really ultimately a political problem? Uh, so the answer can can it be saved? Can you know? It, it, can, can we redeem the institutions? I don't know, but yes, there is something that can be done. And, and Nick kind of alluded to it earlier. Put a a fire in the belly libertarian in charge of the Department of Justice and give them you know in effect uh, a free uh, you know give them full authority to enforce all the laws against whoever breaks them, um, and uh, you will see a a rapid change uh, in behavior um, because you know. If I, for example, uh, were that attorney general, uh, I would create a whole new unit within the Department of Justice to make sure that we have completely revoked the free passes uh, that high ranking politicians currently uh, enjoy and make sure that they understand that those free passes have been revoked um, and that they will, themselves will receive at least as much attention from the Department of Justice as, for example, uh, inner city uh, drug dealers have been receiving. Um, and, you know, for however long, I don't know how long it would be before that inter attorney general will be impeached, probably a matter of uh, weeks instead of months. But uh, <laughs> I think we're know, talking minutes, but. Yes, minutes. hopefully, um, hopefully they get weeks. Yeah. But, you know, I, I sort of fantasize about the, the idea of maybe, you know, bringing a, um, a Jason Voorhees hockey mask uh, into the <laughs> office on the first day of the, the job, the way that, you know, Elon Musk brought a whatever it was, a toilet just to yeah. convey to the, the people. The kitchen sink. Kitchen, uh, kitchen sink. sink. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, it must be. Later uh, used as a toilet, I'm sure. <laughs> but. So, you know, I'm being a little bit flippant, but I do think yeah. that if, if it were possible uh, to to have uh, you know the, the the attorney general of the United States not be a member of either tribe, neither Team Blue nor Team Red, uh, but somebody who is not does not have that political affiliation and has a commitment uh, to even-handedly enforcing the law, not just you know sort of saying that, which they all understand they're supposed to say it, but actually doing it um, and revoking the kinds of free passes that we saw handed out to uh, Hillary Clinton um, and um, uh, arguably Mike Pence and at least so far Hunter Biden and just saying look. I don't care. I don't care who you, what what, yeah. what office you hold or who you're related to. Um, you're you're going to be held to the same standard as the rest uh, as the as all the muggles out there. Um, you know, I think that would be progress. It might burn the whole thing down, uh, but it would, at least it would I think sort of lance the boil of this you know this 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 um, cynicism, this this uh, you know anger and, and frustration that people have that it's only people on my team who are getting singled out for bad treatment, not people on the other team. That's not true, but you're not crazy if you have that impression. That was an excerpt from our live stream talking about the Trump indictment with the Cato Institute's Clark Neely. If you want to see the full conversation, go here. And if you want to see a different excerpt, go here. And make sure to join us every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern when Reason, Zach Weismuller, and I talk with somebody very interesting telling you something that you need to know.